Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here on KF Plus LEGO Mastery. Today we will be doing a full video on the basics of a LEGO vacuum engine. This engine that I have constructed for this specific video has a setup where the valve can be completely adjusted but this is the, the engine that I'll be using in the video. So the things we'll be going over today include how a vacuum engine works, specifically how to calculate its displacement and how to lubricate and tune your vacuum engine for optimal performance. Let's get right into it. So one of the questions I get asked very much is how does a Lego vacuum engine work and how can I make it myself with my own design? to achieve optimal performance. If you're running the engine on vacuum, it's a lot simpler than you think. Basically, in this sense, the engine is turning counterclockwise and the valve crank is spinning at this in the same direction and at the same speed as the piston. What's going on here is when the piston hits bottom dead center, it is right now, the valve will start to open as you can see. And that allows the vacuum pressure or high volume low pressure air to be sucked out of the engine inside the cylinder will want to maintain the same pressure as the outside that actually sucks the piston up because the air pressure needs to remain the same and as it comes up and the valve shuts which is right here which is exactly top dead center that's when the piston goes back down and depending on the speed of the vacuum and how powerful it is will determine the ultimate performance of the engine. For the exhaust cycle when the piston is going down, uh, the design of this valve specifically, single valve system, it's one of the most common valve types for vacuum engines nowadays. Pretty much this L piece blocks off the intake where the vacuum comes out and lets in air back into the cylinder. This actually helps the piston go down because if there wasn't a opening here, it would not let the piston go down. And most vacuum engines can't really run without an exhaust stroke or an exhaust valve. You can make two valve systems for these types of engines. It's a little more complicated, but it works pretty much the same. Moving right along, now we're gonna talk about how to actually tune your Lego vacuum engine and get the proper timing so that it will run properly. As I said in the instruction of how the vacuum engine works section of the video, I described that this valve has to be open when the piston is going up and then is closed and lets the air back in when the piston is going down. So we actually achieve that by adjusting the crank position of the valve compared to the crank position of the piston. So in this case, when the piston is at top dead center here, the valve should be completely closed. And when it hits bottom dead center, it should not be completely closed, but it should be just starting to open or slightly open already. By the time that the piston is at the a quarter of its total rotation, the valve should either be completely open or completely shut. In this case, since the engine is running counterclockwise, the, uh, the valve should be completely open. And when it's at the last quarter of the rotation, it should be completely closed, as you can see. So this is actually how it functions, and it spins over very fast, upwards of 6,000 RPM if you do tune it correctly. In terms of degrees in which to offset it, normally it is 90 degrees offset in the direction that the engine is spinning. So it's not exactly 90 at this engine because the valve is actually not centered on the crank right here. So it does have to be a little offset, but normally what you want is this axle to be 90 degrees. This is performance tuned, but most engines require 90 degree tuning. And this particular engine is very easy to adjust the timing. Basically uh, take off this second part here that supports these gears take this gear off and adjust it accordingly and then put it back on. For any standard base tune, normally 90 degree timing is ideal, especially if you are using a normal single valve system where the, where the valve is on a separate crankshaft. Next, we are going to go over how to properly lubricate your LIGO vacuum engine. 
Now lubrication is something that I highly recommend, especially if your engine is very stiff and you're using very new-ish Legos that haven't been used in the Lego engine before. You want to take your olive oil, and I recommend olive oil for every engine. Um, you can also use veggie oil or grapeseed oil or any of that stuff. I do not recommend any sort of oil-based lubricant. If you do use oil-based lubricant, such as WD-40 or any of the sort, make sure that you clean it off of your Legos if after you use it. Because if it does stay on there for prolonged periods of time, it can damage your Legos. I'm going to take a cotton swab or a Q-tip, as, as you can see here, stick it in the olive oil and just uh, make sure it gets a decent amount on here. So now this cotton swab is soaked with olive oil. Make sure your piston is at bottom dead center, as like it is right now. And simply rub it on the cylinder walls going up and in a sideways motion like this. Make sure to get all of the walls and this wall too. You should have plenty on the cotton swab for the cylinder. Now make sure your valve is at bottom dead center. Keep it there and then stick the cotton swab right here in between the valve and the things that rub against. As you can see, the engine runs a lot quieter and a lot smoother. It's gonna be a tad bit stiffer at first, but once you run it a little bit, it should loosen up quite significantly. Quick side note, if you are using a very high, high RPM engine, it might benefit you to lubricate the axle holes that the axles of the engine go through. Simply put the olive oil on your, on your swab and rub it through the hole here. As you can see, there is plenty of lubricant in there. This will prevent wear of the inside of the hole as well as the axle that runs through it. And finally, for the last section of this video, I'm going to tell you how you can calculate the displacement of a Lego vacuum engine in cubic centimeters. Now, people often get confused when trying to calculate the displacement of a vacuum engine, and they might use cubic studs instead of cubic centimeters, but I'll be using cubic centimeters for this instance. So when calculating the displacement of a LEGO vacuum engine, there are a few important things that you need to understand. And I get very many questions regarding how to calculate the actual displacement. So this piece is the crank of the engine, and this is a normal sized uh, two stud stroke engine that you can find any, almost every LEGO vacuum engine YouTubers have this size crank. How to calculate displacement is the area of the top of the piston times the total stroke or travel of the piston. You can see this is two studs wide. And when it's spinning, this would be bottom dead center and this would be top dead center. As you can see, there's a three stud difference, but actually that's not correct. You actually have to measure from the center of the cross axle that the piston is on, if that's easy to explain. So basically the center of this hole, the center of the crankshaft here is between these two studs. And then when it's at top dead and center at the same um, location, as you can see, it is at the center of these two. Now the distance between this is exactly two studs. So this crank piece has a total stroke of two studs. If we were to use a bigger uh, crankshaft piece like this, the total stroke would be four studs because from the center of here to the center of here is about four studs, not five. People often get this confused with five stud stroke, but it really isn't. I will put the calculation of the, of the total studs stroked on the screen right now. You can take a look at it. But yeah, so that's the first part. The second part to understand is the surface area of the piston. Basically, this piston is a 4x4 four four piston, 16 total studs. We're going to take this number times this number, so 2 times 16, and we get 32 cubic studs. So we need to multiply 32 by 0 0.512, and we get the total cubic centimeters of the engine, which in this case is around... 16 and a half. As we discussed a second ago, 
the top area of the piston. In this case, it's a bigger one. So six by six is 36 times four, which is the total stud length of the stroke from this crankpiece. We get around 144 cubic studs. Multiply that by 0.512 and you get around 74 cubic centimeters. Most single cylinder bike engine kits are less displacement than this. And this singular piston and crank made out of Lego has more displacement in a cylinder than this single engine. So everybody, that's going to just about wrap up today's video on the basics of a Lego vacuum engine. If you did enjoy, please consider hitting the subscribe button. You can always unsubscribe if you want. And also leave a like as it helps the video as well as myself. But anyway, that's going to wrap up today's video. I hope you all did enjoy, and I will see you all in the next video. See you later.